What's up my friends? Today we are going to take a deep dive through one of my favorite spinning rod lines. This is the Megabass Destroyer P5 line. Now there's a ton of rods in this lineup, but today we are calling this the Destroyer P5 Big 5 spinning rod deep dive. These are the five <laughs> models that you guys want to keep on your radar. It's really the first time in a long time or maybe ever that we've actually had all five of these rods, including the OG batch from Japan, the new batch from the USA. So we are gonna break down one of the best spinning rod lines ever. If you'd like to geek out with us, let's do it. Welcome to the Hookup Tackle. Oh, what a oh, stud. Yeah. Look at that. That was <laughs> sick. <laughs> Boom. Cheers, my friends. Happy Sunday. All right, guys, some breaking news. What's in this week? It's the hook of time. What a beautiful post on fish. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that gut on that. That's a nice fish. It's cool. Oh, 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 oh. Welcome back, my friends. I am Ben with the Hookup Tackle, Tackle Chaku on Instagram, being joined this fine morning by my buddy CJ. What's up, CJ? Nothing much, man. Excited to talk about this uh, exciting topic today. Spinning rods. Spinning rods. Everybody's favorite topic. <laughs> Notice Jeff's not here for this Right, one. <laughs> yeah, no, he bailed on this idea. Yeah. Uh, so, look, I have a straight love-love relationship with a spinning rod. I'd obviously rather catch him on a big casting rod, but the reality is, is that this is a tool that's super critical. If you're if you're really going to be catching a lot of fish, you need spinning rods in your arsenal. Yep. Not, you know, we get a lot of people that come through and like, oh, I just hate spinning rods. I'll throw my drop shot on a bait caster, blah, 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 whatever. I mean, do whatever you want to do. At the end of the day, this is all about us just having fun and having a good time. But where spinning rod shines so often is really in light line applications, right? So I try to think of this in a way of, if I'm throwing straight, basically 10 pound and above, Casting rods usually a better option. It's a little bit better, you know, casting a real store's line a little bit easier. You usually throwing heavier baits. Usually they're geared more towards that. But if I'm throwing sub 10 pound line, eight pound, seven pound, six pound, four pound, whatever, the drag on a good spinning reel is so superior to that of a bait casting reel yep. that spinning rod just makes sense, right? So today we are going to break down one of my favorite lines, which is the Destroyer P5 line. If you've hung out anywhere around this channel at all, you've heard me talk about the rod in my hand, which is a Destroyer P5 Windbuster. This is my favorite spinning rod ever made. Uh, and it's really kind of set precedent for the rest of the line uh, in the P5s. Now, before earlier this year, there were models that were just really confusing because it was all a Japan offering and it went Windbuster, Landsat, baby plugging, you know, whip it, then some of the Kurosames. It was kind of a confusing line. And then the US added two spinning models in, the Adamine and the Flissa, and it even clouded it a little bit more. Like, well, do I get this one? Do I get this one? So today we're gonna break that down and we're gonna have it make sense so you guys know the difference between a Windbuster and Adamine, a Flissa and a baby plugging, so on and so forth, so that you guys can make the best decision, okay? So if you are new to uh, the Destroyer P5 spinning rod lineup. There is a quick look. They all kind of have that same shape, the same grip system, uh, which you're going to love or you're going to hate. And it's kind of a polarizing system. I love it. For the way I hold my rods, this is like the most comfortable grip system ever. I like holding my rods either above or right at that reel. If I put one finger behind and I close it down, my two main middle fingers are right in that groove. My front fingers are right on that metal, which is bringing sensitivity to me. It's like the perfect, easy spot. I can fish all day in comfort. It's great. Now, <clears throat> let's start with this rod, okay? So this would be rod number one of the big five, which is the Windbuster. Now, let me spec this Windbuster out for you. It's F3.5 7.2XS. So it's a 7.2 rod. Lure rating is quarter to five eighths. Now, this rod was built 
with the idea of throwing hard baits. Okay, this is the idea behind this rod. When you really start flexing this rod, it kind of bends right here in the middle. It's a pretty powerful, pretty thick rod, but it was designed for throwing baits like an EdoVision 110 or even a crankbait, walking topwater bait, something like this. And the name Windbuster is basically giving homage to the idea that Mega Bass had. Well, what if we build a spinning rod for throwing these hard baits so when it's super windy and we got to throw right into the wind, we can do it without backlashing. Mm -hmm. That was the idea behind this rod, okay? And this rod ends up being amazing at doing all those techniques because when they're hooked, the rod bends through the middle like you would want a, you know, reaction bait treble hook rod to do. Out of pure accident, <laughs> the rod ends up being one of the most sensitive rods in the line. Wasn't necessarily designed that way, it's just how it came to be. And even though the rod was built as a hard bait rod, most of us here, I throw this on bait casting. I don't throw it on spinning. If I was gonna throw it on spinning, this is the rod I would throw it on. Yep. Bait casting. Mm -hmm. If I was gonna throw it on spinning, this would be the one I was, right? So I don't really need a spinning rod to throw these hard baits. I'm gonna do it on my, on my casting. If I was, I would do this. But what I use this rod for is I use it for bottom contact. For me, it's the free rig master yep. rod. I have not found another rod. The closest to this rod that I've found is the 842 SJR NRX. That rod is very, very close. But the way this rod bends, the way the sensitivity transfers, the way the hook set ends up happening on a free rig for something like a three or a four inch bait, uh, it handles a quarter ounce and a three eighth ounce evenly. So you don't really feel any difference between a quarter ounce and a three eighth ounce when you change the weight. It handles both weights exactly the same. That's like 99% of everything I ever need to do on a free rig, on any kind of dragging type thing. So maybe even like a light Carolina rig if you were to do that. Uh, weightless Senkos, unbelievable, right? because the rod actually has a relatively fast tip. You don't really get into the bend until that hook set in your fighting fish. So for me, this is the free rig mastery rod, the best probably all around junk rod in the line. Again, because it was designed for hard baits, it's super sensitive so you can fish soft baits. It's unbelievable. But the one asterisk I will tell you is because it was built for throwing half ounce and five eighths ounce hard baits, it is pretty powerful, okay? So if you are using something like a nose hook drop shot, it's so powerful, so strong, that it'll overpower a lot of that lighter stuff. And that's where these other rods are really gonna niche out in there, okay? So there's rod number one, the wind buster. Now, by the way, I'm flexing. <laughs> And I just Sneak wanted to put <laughs> the nicest reels I possibly could on these. Uh, I love exists on my Windbuster. I want to size up reels with the rod so you guys know if this is new to you. The Windbuster needs a 3000 reel. So I use a 3000 exist. I use the D, which is the deeper spool, quote unquote, lower gear ratio. Uh, the D, even though it's a lower gear ratio, it's equivalent to like a seven, three to one in a casting. So it's kind of a good all around speed. So if you were going to use it to throw a jerk bait, it's not too fast. If you're using it to throw bottom contact, it's fast enough for line pickup. It's kind of that good in between. Yeah. If you're just using it for bottom contact, then you can do the 3000 H, which is a little bit higher gear ratio. But, uh, I have the D's on mine just because there was no H when the D's came out. <laughs> so I got D's and I've been happy with them. Looks so, great. Uh, but you need that 3000, whether it's Exist, Stella, whatever you're gonna put on it, Banford, Ballistic, that 3000 just really helps sit it in your hand correctly. Okay, so there you go. Number one, Windbuster. Okay, staying in the, we're gonna call it the older line of rods, even though it's only about two years old. <laughs> uh, this was another one of the OG drops. This is the baby plugging. Okay, so this rod kind of goes hand in hand or side by side that Windbuster has for a long time uh, before the US came out with the models they came out with. This just spec it out as an F1.5 7.2 uh, 
Uh, so it's 3 32nd to 7 16th of an ounce. Now, before the Flissa, which we're going to talk about in a minute, this was kind of the rod in the P5 that most of us use to throw something like an Okashira screw head uh, spark shad combo. It was also the rod that a lot of us used for throwing nose hook drop shot, okay? This rod has kind of been overshadowed a lot now by the addition of the next two rods we're gonna talk about, which is the Attermine and the Flissa, mm -hmm. okay? The baby plugging bends really deep into the rod, okay? So this rod was designed as a rod for throwing kind of baby plugs, okay? <laughs> yep, yep, Meaning yep. smaller baits. Okay, smaller little jerk baits, smaller little crank baits. And if you want a rod for throwing like a little uh, bait finesse griffin, small little crank bait, like a Super Z, something like that, this is an amazing rod for doing it because it's really built like a crank bait rod. You can see that as I bend this rod all the way down, here's the first guide. And even right there, it's still bending, right? Even below that first guide, I still have a little flex. I mean, even all, uh, here's the real. It's crazy. And it's flexing right there, yeah. okay? The reason this is important to know is because this is a super fun rod to make real whippy casts. You can throw things like a spy bait. Like this is my spy bait rod, right? You can whip it for as far as you wanna go, but you need to understand this rod has zero power after the fish are hooked. Okay, so if it's important that you hook a fish and pull it away from cover, do not get this rod. If you are fishing more open water and you have a chance to hook a fish and let them run and pull drag, this is one of the funnest rods you'll ever use because the rod just, it bends everywhere, right? It's so intuitive. This is also an amazing rod if you guys cross over from bass to other species. If you cross over to a fish like trout, Yep. where their lips are real soft, right? They're a little bit more delicate. Crappie would be another one where they kind of have that paperish kind of mouth. This would be a killer rod for that where you're throwing a spinner, a little jerk bait, fucking power bait, who cares, right? <laughs> yeah. Because the rod bends so far, it's gonna really give a lot and it's not gonna tear any baits out of the face of fish. So where do I find this rod has application for me? It's now kind of my dedicated spy bait rod is really where it fits into my arsenal or really, really finesse plastics, like a light Neko rig if I'm gonna throw it, a really light drop shot because it's so whippy up here at the tip, right? That it really lets something that's only an eighth of an ounce or 16th of an ounce, you can load it really easy and get that whip out there. Mm -hmm. So it certainly has a home for me it's definitely become more niche though with the addition of the next two rods that we're talking about, okay? Uh, by the way, on reel, 2500 is perfect on this. So you've got some options. You could do a 2500XH, uh, which would be their high speed. So if you're just doing bottom contact stuff, that's what I would do. Uh, or I, since I'm throwing mostly reaction stuff where I'm casting and winding it, I like the deeper spool for that if I'm going straight floral. And I go straight floral a lot on a bait like a spy bait <clears throat> instead of going braid to leader. There's not a right or wrong, okay? So it's whatever you like to do. Uh, I personally like the deeper spool for that. I like a little bit bigger handle when I'm doing reaction just because I feel like I can wind it and crank it a little bit quicker. Uh, but personal preference is gonna play into this a lot but I would definitely recommend a 2,500 size. 3,000 really overloads this rod. It's only an F one and a half. So it's a really light power, even though it's seven foot two inches, that lighter reel really helps. Dice rod, you think? You think it's still too much? Yeah, no, dice rod. Yeah. That would be a killer dice rod because it's all about that tip, mm -hmm. right? So if that was rigged with, you know, 10 pound braid. Right. Yeah, you could, you could I think flick it would that handle. dice forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be a perfect dice rod. Let's jump into this guy. This is probably been the most asked about rod uh, that's really come down the pipe from Mega Bass in a long time, and that's the brand new Destroyer P5 Flissa. Okay? So, this is an F2.5 uh, 7.6 XS. So, it's kind of positioned. Remember that Windbuster was F3.5? Yeah. Baby Plugging was F1.5. 
Here's an F2.5. So it's kind of right in between those powers, right? Uh, lure rating, you're at 16th to 3 8 is the lure rating on this rod. When this rod was first brought onto the scene, it became everybody's staple small swim bait hair jig rod. Okay, and the reason for that is the Fliss is a long rod, 7 6. It's pretty powerful all the way up through the mid section of the rod. But then that top section has this really nice kind of light tip to it. So you can see how fast it is, right? When I bend it, it's really kind of getting fast right away. So it's really just that last couple feet that have that little whip. So for throwing something like a little 16th ounce or eighth ounce, you know, hair jig, Okashira screw head, spark shad, any of this lighter size stuff that you need that long reach and that, that whip out there, the Fliss is next to impossible to beat. It's really kind of the rod that everybody else kind of builds around. So if you're looking at like the Dioestes, the one, it was modeled after this. If you look at any of the Tatula hair jig rods, they're all kind of modeled after this kind of taper. This is what they're after, is that flex at the tip and then that faster, more powerful rod, okay? Now, you can use this rod for all kinds of things. If you want to throw a drop shot on it, you can throw a drop shot on it, you can throw a light tube, you can do all those things. But day in and day out, I would look at this rod, even though it's the longest rod in our lineup, mm -hmm. it's a rod that's designed for throwing that 16th ounce, eighth ounce, three sixteenth ounce, you know, quarter maybe on the heavy side. That's really where it wants to live. Hair jig, ball head swim bait, nose hook drop shot, like a drop swim rod would be killer money yeah. on this right uh if you guys are in the great lakes or you know fish big water like this this would be a must-have rod uh because even if you're kind of coming up on a big wave and you get bit and you're on your way down you have seven and a half foot of rod to pull and actually get that hook to engage it'd be a sick sick rod for that uh on reels 3000 is going to be pretty important on this just because it's i know it's only an f two and a half but it's seven and a half feet long so that 3000 really balances it a lot of guys even go to a four on this, mm -hmm. uh, especially if they're fishing big open water. Depending on how you're going to use it, uh, pay attention to the gear ratio and speed on these. The D uh, in the exist or like a normal gear ratio in whatever reel you're in may end up being the best option if you're doing mostly hair jigs, small swim baits, Oka Shira screw heads. You want to be very careful not to go too fast on these small little swim baits. Small swim bait has really a sweet speed. And if you have an eight to one gear ratio on here and you're winding really fast, that bait's gonna kind of drift on its side and go too fast. So I like the lower speed for this style of fishing, if that's how you're using it. If you're just throwing a drop shot, then yeah, get the high speed one. So that you're just on the bottom and you're using the rod more to drag and this is just like line pickup, right? So you can, base your own personal use to the right way to pair that up. But uh, there you go. There is the Flissa. That's rod number three. All right, rod number four is another new one. This is another F3.5. This is a 611. This is the P5 Adderman. Okay, so this is, uh, let me just pick it out for you. It's eighth to half ounce on the lure rating. The Adderman is really the rod that was designed for drop shot okay you can shake your head on it you can ned rig on it by the way that baby plug would be a really cool like light ned rig yeah rod that'd be a lot of fun we don't really ever ned rig out here unless <laughs> we're forced to unless uh, we lose a bet thank god days. uh but the adder mine would be able to handle any of that stuff well what the adder mine is going to do best like let's think of this in the drop shot realm for a minute what this rod's really going to shine at is that three sixteenths to three eighth ounce weight okay so if you're using a quarter ounce weight a three eighth ounce weight something like that plus a worm that's the wheelhouse of this rod if you go much lighter in weight than three sixteenths baby plugging would be better okay if you need to go heavier than three eighths then windbuster might be better just to give yeah. yourself a little bit more power right but the outer mine taper is beautiful so you have this little light tip Okay, similar to that of a Flissa, but instead of it just getting super fast, you notice that it's a little bit more gradual through the taper here, right? And what that will do is that will give you a tremendous amount of power 
when setting the hook on weedless drop shot. So if you guys are using like more of a Texas rig style drop shot, like what we do out here a lot, fishing through the bushes, you're using a you know, cover shot or rebarb hook, something like that, this is the rod you want to get. It's also soft enough to where it does nose hook equally as well. So it's one of those rare rods where if you nose hook drop shot or you weedless drop shot, it can do both. Uh, also, because of that taper, it's got the power, lure ratings to half ounce, right? It has the power to be able to handle a small jig, a shaky head, those types of baits as well. Uh, really, it's a true bottom contact soft plastic rod. It's not gonna do many other things incredibly well. Of course, with any spinning rod, if you need it to, in a pinch, throw a jerk bait or something, of course, do it. But the other rods we talked about already, are gonna be much better options for that. This is really the rod you want for drop shot style plastics. Neko rig, drop shot, shaky head. Net. It's huge that you can use both styles of hooks with that rod too. It is, and you know, as you go down rabbit holes, of course you're gonna find that certain rods are more your speed for no soak or more your speed for weedless or more your speed for free rig or you know everybody kind of has their own flavor that fits them based on how they hold it how they move it if you drag if you lift up and down your hook set yeah. power yeah. like some people are just you know gradual hook setters where they can just lay into it nice and easy some people need to crack the whip and try yeah. to rip the heads off right uh, yeah so you know all of this is just personal experience that we're sharing giving you a good starting point but it is one of those rare rods that honestly can do both nose and weedless. Yep. Uh, as far as the reel goes, you can do a 2,500 or a 3,000 on this. Okay, so it's it's a it's one of those rare rods too that balances almost every reel. Okay, I don't know that I'd go to a four because it's only 611. So this is a 3,000 high speed on here, and it's about the biggest I would go. 2,500 XH is money on it. Right, but I would go with the high speed reel on this shallower because you're probably gonna go braid to leader. Uh, and the high speed will be perfect for the bottom contact. So there you go. There's the Adamine. There's rod number four. All right, rod number five. Now, I might upset some of you if this isn't the one that you have in your lineup or were hoping I was gonna speak of. Uh, but for me, this is the other one that's really important to keep on the radar if this is a style of fishing that you do. Okay, and this is the Destroyer P5 whip it okay now the whip it uh is an f2 66s all spec it's 132nd to quarter ounce okay this is a six foot six inch rod designed for kind of whipping casts okay so you can see it's got a very similar taper i would say to kind of a hybrid in between a flissa and a windbuster Okay, I, I liken it to like a little baby windbuster. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's got a soft enough tip and just like the windbuster, it's surprisingly sensitive. So if you're throwing light plastics uh, and you like the idea of having a little shorter rod, this would be a killer one for throwing, flicking a little Neko rig out there. Dice yep, would dice. also be good here. Light mm -hmm. little drop shot, little Ned. This rod will be great for that. Where we all use this rod, this is the really the only spinning rod that I use for jerk baits, and this is like the rod if you're going to be throwing smaller style jerk baits and you need a spinning. Rod. Yep. Yep. Okay. So a lot of times when you're looking at like an Edo Vision 110 or an Asura, something like this or like a 110 Junior or an Asura, these can go either way. You could throw them on a spinning or you could throw them on casting, right? But then a lot of times you drop down into something like a Durga and it's only four and a half grams, right? And it's a little tough, even though there's a weight transfer system in it, it's a little hard to throw that on casting, but you put it on spinning and it's game on, right? So this would be a great rod for throwing any of this like X Nanahan, 110 Junior, Durga, Asura, any of these smaller little jerk baits and hard baits, this rod is money on it mm -hmm. and I like it more than the baby plugging is a jerk bait hard bait rod because it's super responsive and it bounces back really fast right so the baby plugging is a little soft it bends so deep that it, when i'm twitching the whole rod kind of vibrates whereas this one i gave it a twitch and it just bounces right back you can fish it effortlessly all day it's a sick little rod yeah. if if you fish this way 
Uh, so as far as reels go, I would recommend doing a 2000 or a 2500. This is a 2500 on this one, uh, which fits it great. Uh, as far as speed, just depends on what you guys are doing. If you are fishing more reaction bait stuff, I would go with lower speed. If you're fishing more bottom contact stuff, go with the higher speed. Uh, that's kind of how I always gauge, same as all the other rods, okay? But there is rod number five that's definitely worth being on the radar. That's the P5 Whippet. All right, guys, that is a wrap today. Now, yes, there are a few other rods floating around the lineup. There's rods like, you know, the Landsat, which I have not been a fan of. A lot of guys like it. I just think there's no need for it with the Attermine being in the lineup. It was kind of that rod that did that, but the Attermine is just so much more sensitive. Some of the Kurosamis are unbelievable, but they're very, very niche rods. So if you guys have questions on any of the rods that we didn't cover, drop it down below, hit me up on Instagram, shoot us an email, and I'll get you... I mean, we can go down rabbit holes all day long. I love talking <laughs> about rods. So I'll get you whatever information that you want. But... Uh, if you're just kind of getting into this world, the five rods we talked about today really are the ones you want to focus on. These are unbelievable rods. You just kind of change the way you think about how a spinning rod should be used and your enjoyment just goes up a lot with them. So uh, again, questions, drop them down below. I'll get answers for you. Uh, CJ will put a link to the rods. You want to check them out closer. And guys, on behalf of myself and CJ and everybody here at the Hookup Tackle, Thank you for giving us time to watch these videos. Thank you for your business and your support. And enjoy the P5 Big Five. We'll see you on the water, guys. Peace. See you guys.